If you can all please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If you can remain standing, we have our police chaplain, Vincent Berenger, giving us our invocation this evening. Thank you. Would you please bow your head as we pray? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear wise and loving Father, first let me say thank you on behalf of all those who are gathered here today. Thank you for your many and abundant blessings that you have given to each and every one of us. Thank you for life itself, for the health that we have, that we need to fulfill our callings for food and for friendship. Thank you for the ability to be involved in useful work and for the honor of bearing appropriate responsibility. Thanks as well for the freedom to embrace you or the freedom to reject you. Thank you for loving us, even though we so often do not deserve it, because of your boundless and gracious nature. Your word says that citizens ought to obey the governing authorities, since you have established those very authorities to promote peace and order and justice in our community. Therefore, I pray for our Mayor Miguel and for our council members, David, Vicente, Juan, Cecilia, as well as, and Jose, as well as for the various levels of city officials, including David, our police chief, and our city manager, Raul. I'm asking that you would graciously grant them wisdom to govern amid the conflicting interests and difficult issues of our times, a sense of the welfare and the true needs of our people, a keen thirst for justice and rightness, confidence in what is good and fitting, the ability to work together in harmony, even when they disagree with one another and that you grant them each a double portion of personal peace in their own lives, enjoying the work you've entrusted them with. I pray for this agenda that has been set before them today. But please grant them an assurance of what would please you and what would benefit those who live and work here in our beloved city of Santa Ana. It's in your most blessed name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much. You may be seated. I would note as we begin our council meeting uh, today that uh, we're going to have a new city manager here very shortly, and I believe in part that is why this agenda is relatively light, so we can, um, you know, start on many items uh, uh, with fresh eyes. And so, I want to ask our, I want to thank our uh, interim city manager, uh, you know, for his help in. Uh, in doing this because I it is a relatively light agenda uh, so with that I would ask that uh, we have uh, folks from the Orange County Transportation Authority uh, come forward and make a presentation on the uh, I-5 uh, the Santa Ana freeway as I like to call it Central County Improvement Project please go ahead Good evening, Mayor, City Council. My name is Andrea West, and I'm with the Orange County Transportation Authority. And before we jump into the I-5 project update, which is what we're here for this evening, I did want to update you on one other planning study that OCTA has underway, just so it's on your radars. We're going to be getting um, outreach on that very soon. Um, this is for the Bristol Street Transit Corridor study, and we started this back in October of last year. This study will develop options to improve transit service along Bristol Street, from 17th Street in Santa Ana down to the South Coast Metro area and we'll also evaluate connections to John Wayne Airport. Community input will be sought during each study of the phase, including the corridor definition, alternatives development, and evaluation. Uh, the study is intended to serve as an in, a very high-level initial planning study to evaluate a range of alternatives and will identify the best performing ones that have wide community support. As I mentioned, outreach will begin later this month and will be ongoing throughout the study. And we plan to come back to the City Council at key points throughout the study so you'll always be kept informed as to what's going on. With that, I'll turn the uh, presentation over to Kalina and to Niall, who will give you an update on the I-5 project. Good evening, Mayor Polito, members of the Council. Again, my name is Niall Barrett. 
Program Manager at the Orange County Transportation Authority. I'm here tonight to give you an update on the Interstate 5 Improvement Project. Uh, this is between the State Route 55 and the State Route 57. So the I-5 Central project, as it's known, or the High Occupancy Vehicle Project, uh, is located within the cities of Santa Ana and Orange, and it is uh, it's Project A in a Measure M2, or OC-GO, as we know it today. And it is also part of the Next 10 Delivery Plan that has been approved by the OCTA Board in September 2018. So the project seeks to eliminate the current congestion issue in the HOV lanes that we see on the I-5 between the 55 and the 57. Essentially today you have two lanes, two high occupancy vehicle lanes that merge into one and there is a lot of congestion in the HOV lanes. So the intent is to add the second HOV lane which will relieve congestion in both the northbound and the southbound directions on the I-5. Uh, this will improve uh, the access to the HOV lane as well because a lot of the concrete barriers that you see out there today will go away once uh, the project is complete. The total project cost is $41.5 million. Uh, we have various uh, methods to help pay for it. The largest one is congestion mitigation and air quality funds. We also have some surface transportation block grant and local OCGO funds as well. Construction began on February 20th. So one of the key components and in fact the key challenges of this project is the closure of the existing I-5 HOV drop ramp off Main Street. And uh, you'll see that in approximately the center of the graphic here at the moment. Uh, this uh, underutilized facility will free up the right-of-way that's needed uh, to construct the additional carpool lane in each direction on the I-5. And so what this allows us to do is to construct the project entirely within the existing state's right-of-way. So in order, before we can demolish the HOV ramp, we need to close the HOV ramp. And in fact, that work is scheduled to begin currently uh, to begin next week. Uh, we've been in constant contact with, of course, the city of Santa Ana, as well as the local residents and, of course, the businesses in the area, Rancho Santiago Community College, as well as the Discovery Cube. So demolition of the actual HOV ramp itself is currently scheduled for early July and the primary detour route which will be for the northbound direction uh, traffic will be to continue traffic north on the I-5 uh, on the State Route 55 and then divert traffic over onto the State Route 22 to rejoin northbound on the I-5. The demolition work will uh, happen at night um, so that uh, impacts to the traffic both local and uh, on a larger scale will be minimized. The project construction schedule then, you can see that uh, technically we began construction in 2018 when the construction contract was approved. Uh, again, we began construction in earnest in February of this year. Construction will continue until early 2021. And as you can see, a lot of the, the major work happens in the first six months of this project. Uh, what you will see in the next couple of weeks is a lot more lane restriping, k -ray being placed on the I-5 as well as up on Main Street before we can close that HOV ramp down onto the I-5. So once we get that ramp demolished, there will be a lot of drainage, pavement, retaining walls, lighting, uh, electrical, and various other construction work required to install those additional two HOV lanes. With that, at this time, I would like to hand it over to OCTA's Community Relations Officer, Kalina North. Thank you. Oh. 
Good evening, Mayor, members of the City Council. As Niall mentioned, my name is Kalina North. I'm the Public Outreach Manager for this project. Tonight, I am here to provide you an overview of some of OCTA's outreach strategies over the past year and a half to share information with the community about this project. So the OCTA Public Outreach Team uses several strategies to engage the public. We began our latest efforts in the design phase at the end of 2017 making presentations to uh, neighborhood associations in Santa Ana, including Park Santiago and Floral Park. We also brief civic organizations such as Kiwanis Club of Santa Ana and the Santa Ana Chamber of Commerce, as well as key stakeholders as Discovery Cube, Main Place Mall, Vero's Credit, and the Rancho Santiago Community College District. Our team also participated in numerous community events here in Santa Ana, such as the 4th of July celebration, the Santa Ana Art Walk, and Dia de los Muertos. On March 23rd, we held our first neighborhood meeting in the Park Santiago community to share information about the upcoming I-5 Main Street carpool ramp closure and demolition. Tomorrow morning, Wednesday, April 3rd at 10 o'clock in the morning, OCTA is hosting a stakeholder working group meeting with key community leaders, business owners, and emergency responders to provide them with a project update. So OCTA prides itself in a comprehensive community outreach program, and our efforts go beyond briefings and presentations. We have a wide range of collateral, with the majority translated in Spanish. These include fact sheets, FAQs, and most recently, a map showing carpool lane users how to get to Main Street once the ramp is eliminated. We also began weekly construction alerts last month, which are sent out every Friday on a weekly basis. In addition, we recently launched a text message survey a service to notify those who signed up about major construction activities, lane closures, and detours. Uh, we are in the process of developing an interactive map that provides users with an easy way to understand and find out about the latest lane closures and detour information. And of course, there's social media that we leverage to promote project awareness. So we will continue our efforts using a variety of tactics to reach different segments of the population through the end of construction. So with that said, that concludes our presentation, and Niall and myself are, answer, are available to answer any questions the council may have. Any questions from the council members? Yes. Welcome. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for coming. I uh, love learning about uh, transportation and everything OCTA. Um, can you talk, I know there's a slide showing the HOV ramp. Can you talk about the, the changes there, I think? I'm going to hand that over to Niall. Yeah, so changes to the to the HOV ramps, if any, and then I think uh, there was a bullet point talking about uh, increased HOV capacity, and so I'm curious on how you're going to accomplish that. Sure. Um, so today, as you're probably uh, sorely aware, when you're traveling north or south on the I-5 in the carpool lane, uh, there's a merge coming from the 55 northbound and from the 57 southbound. And typically, you find out all too late that uh, you've been uh, bottlenecked, let's mm -hmm. say. So by adding an additional carpool lane in each direction, so we'll have two carpool lanes in each direction, okay. and then they'll split off if you're northbound up the 57. Mm -hmm. If you're southbound, it'll connect seamlessly into the carpool uh, connector to the 55 southbound. So what this does by uh, eliminating this existing HOV drop ramp out here, and you can even see there's a little green area on the south side of this graphic here, this, free, this frees up a lot of space that's out there today that's been taken up by this HOV drop ramp. So it is underutilized as far as uh, the traffic numbers that we get from Caltrans, and so you'll see a lot more traffic being able to use those HOV lanes once we install a second carpool so lane are, are, right are you, there. Are you only talking about removing the carpool lanes that are southbound 5 that access Main Street directly? Is that what you're referring to? So, I'm, I'm almost like right in the middle of the, of the photo to the west of the, of the cube, that little elbow. Exactly. Like, shape. Th that little elbow will, will go away. Will disappear. And that's the only set of on ramps off ramps that are disappearing exactly okay and i think you're right that's not used very often i i i you i i in the in, in that area all the time anyway. right not compared to the rest of the uh carpools on the i-5 right. 
And then I think it's also very tight, and so you also see a lot of black marks <laughs> on that. On that. On there the, are. The turn there. Yeah. So, thank you. Thank okay. You so much. Thank you. Uh, you know, related but unrelated. I know there's increased uh, outreach from from OCTA regarding the OC streetcar, and it's coming to Santa Ana, obviously. Uh, we, I think, have some new council members that haven't heard, you know, proper presentation with what it is and, and, and timing and your roles after it's constructed, our roles, their operational costs, our operational costs. And I think uh, if you could take that back, it would be nice to Will do. bring that back at a Thank future you. meeting. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you very much. And uh, I see that the ramp closures are for early April, so are we talking this week or next week? Next week to close week. the ramp. Um, as I say, demolition won't happen until either late June or early July. As you can imagine, there's a lot of preparation that needs to happen to demolish. Uh, there's a lost deck within the bridge. There's a lot of electrical out there. Um, a lot of K-rail that needs to go up. Um, just it's, it's, a, it's a major event to close the I-5 and demolish this type of bridge. I see. I was wondering why there's you know a large gap of time between April and then in the summer, but thank you for answering that. Sure. Mr. Mayor. Thank you. If we have no other issues, let me say thank you for the great job that you do at OCTA. Kind of like to call it OCTA sometimes, because I figure every time we say the acronym, we waste a few seconds, but... Um, and in Spanish, they do call it La Opta. Oh, the not only that, people from outside, they say it's like an octopus or something. It's OCTA. You know? But, uh, but anyways, go back to Daryl and company and say that we much appreciate uh, the presentation here today. Thanks. Thank you. Now I think we have another presentation on the U.S. Census Bureau. And they're going to tell us how they're going to, uh, how they are going to amend the questionnaire so that it's inclusive of the community. No, I'm kidding. But this is... Uh, a great gentleman works stepping up here towards the microphone, and um, happy to see you in this capacity. And um, let me turn it over at this time. How have you been? Honorable Mayor and City Council, good evening. It's a pleasure to be in the City of Santa Ana tonight. I'm Balwin Partnership Specialist with the U.S. Census Bureau, and I'm out at the Los Angeles Regional Census Center with the Community Partnership and Engagement Program. Former Mayor of Garden Grove, by the way, and also a guy that does a lot of things well, so if you're on board, I think we're going to have a better census count. Actually, it's going to depend on all of you if we'll have a better census count. That's what you're supposed to say. Thank so, you. We do have a model, and that's to count everyone once, only once, and in the right place. So why do we do a census? It's actually required by this, the Constitution. It's right up front before it talks about the different branches of government in Article 1, Section 2. And it's been conducted every 10 years since 1790. And it is a count of everyone and everyone means everyone it's also about fair representation every 10 years the head count the population numbers determine how many seats each state receives in the u.s house of representatives after the 2010 census california remained at 53 out of 435 and just for comparison texas gained four new york and ohio each lost two it also means about $675 billion awarded annually to vital programs and community uh, resources. And this is a number from George Washington University. I read in Reuters recently that the number is actually about $800 billion annually. So it's also about redistricting uh, for our state legislative districts, our Senate and Assembly districts, our school board by trustee area districts, and certainly uh, the by ward elections as well. So in California, that comes out to be approximately $76 billion each year, and that's about $2,000 per person counted, underlying counted. So I want to assure uh, Mayor, you and the council and members of the public that the data is confidential, which is required by law. Uh, the Census Act is enshrined in U.S. Code Title 13, and there has never been a violation of that code since it's been enacted in 1954. The information that comes out of the Census Bureau is only reported in a, in a statistical format, 
There is no personally identifiable information. The Census Bureau does not share any information that is not in a statistical format with other federal agencies. So other federal agencies such as Immigration, Homeland Security, IRS may share information with the Census Bureau, but that's a one-way street. Nothing personally identifiable goes out to other federal agencies, including the U.S. President. All Census employees, including those uh, who work with the Census Bureau on the city end, has taken a lifetime oath to protect that information, and there are strict penalties for that. So those in the city who have worked with the Census on uh, updating your uh, GIS system with the Census Bureau, you've also taken that oath, and no information that is personally identifiable can be shared with code enforcement or the police. 2020 will be the easiest census since we'll have folks uh, be able to respond online and by phone in 12 languages in addition to English. The paper form will also be available and that will be available in English and bilingual Spanish English. That will start March 23rd of next year. So in addition to our partnership program, where we're partnering with cities to form complete count committees, there will be mail going home to people who have addresses. And they may receive a pre-assigned ID, which pre-populates the form field when they do respond, either online or by phone. But they don't need that uh, pre-assigned ID. So if there are folks who are living in uh, not-to-code dwellings or who are not receiving mail, we still would like to partner with those serving the hard to count populations to assure their safety in their response and encourage them to participate and get counted. So the languages that will be available online and by phone in addition to English include Spanish, Chinese Simplified, Vietnamese, Korean, Russian, Arabic, Tagalog, Polish, French, Haitian Creole, Portuguese, and Japanese. And there will also be 59 non-English languages available by glossary and language ID card for those communities, uh, those uh, community nonprofits who are serving those linguistic communities. We're focusing on the hard-to-count population, which includes veterans, the homeless, children under five, oftentimes uh, children who share uh, custody with um, uh, their, their parents may not be uh, reported, so we encourage everybody. Uh, if the child is born during a time where you have not yet responded to the census, or if the child is still in the hospital, it's a newborn, please do count the children. It's really important since a lot of programs like WIC and Head Start depend on the census count. Certainly senior citizens, people with disabilities, renters, the foreign-born immigrant population, migrant workers and uh, farm workers, Native Americans, Native Hawaiians and other Pacific Islanders, refugees, those who fear the government from where they've come from, or those who don't trust our government. And certainly those who do not speak English well, and also the LGBTQ community. I want to draw your attention to the national low response areas, which you can find at census.gov slash Rome. So here is a picture, a snapshot of Santa Ana. It's in dark blue. This particular census tract has a low response score of 31%. That means that 31% of the folks in this particular census tract did not respond to the last census. And when you go to census.gov slash Rome, you can find more information as to the demographics, and that is collected from the American Community Survey, also conducted by the U.S. Census Bureau. I am encouraging uh, your city to help in the effort of forming a complete count committee. This is a committee that is made up of diverse leaders and influencers in uh, your city. It may include folks of the heads of the school system. Uh, right now, you know, your wonderful staff, uh, Daisy Perez, has already uh, put the pieces together and we're currently working with Teresa Mercado Cota from Santa Ana College, the Rancho Santiago Community College District. Also with Santa Ana Unified School District, Dr. Susie Lopez Guerra. And, uh, you know, Mayor, if, if you would consider uh, yourself or designating perhaps um, Council Member David Peñalosa, who represents 
uh, about 53% of your city in the hard to count and with the low response score areas. So in addition, in addition to, uh, to, to having a council member uh, chair and represent on this complete count committee, we certainly want to encourage you to help us reach out to those uh, leaders in other sectors in the community, including our faith-based community and our business community. I know that uh, the uh, president and CEO of the Santa Ana Chamber of Commerce has already indicated his willingness to serve on this complete count committee. So Let me right. just stop you for a minute on that sure. and say that I'd be happy to serve. And I just heard uh, Councilor Peñalosa saying, count, you know, count me in. Yeah. No pun intended, but count them. <laughs> count them in this. And, um, and, and we'll look, this is a very important thing for the city. It's tens of millions of dollars. And over the decade, it gets into the hundreds. So the better the count, the better off we all are. That's right, and that count only happens every 10 years. So as you know, your community development block grant funds are determined from the census count. But it also uh, is a count that other institutions like nonprofits and those who are planning hospitals and schools can look at to plan for building new hospitals and schools in the community. And businesses can do it for economic development, and uh, you know everybody can uh, have access to that data for whatever purpose they need. That's right, Mayor. And of course, the Census Bureau also has some resources for the business community as well to uh, plan for your new business. You can go on to census.gov and look at that information and access that data for yourself. We're in the middle of the education and awareness phase, and the motivation phase will begin March 2020 when folks are able to self-respond to the census. And if they don't, we'd like to remind them uh, starting in May through the end of July when they're able to respond. So the responses close at the end of July 2020. And after that, we'd like to thank all of you uh, who are partnering with us and everyone who is uh, partnering with the Census Bureau for this massive national undertaking. In addition to our strategy of forming complete count committees, we are also partnering with those who are community nonprofits and social service organizations, primarily those who are serving the hard to count, faith-based communities, those who serve the foreign-born immigrant communities, bringing stats into our schools. If you go to census.gov slash schools, there's curricula available for all subjects at all grade levels. So please check that out. Also partnering with the media. Uh, to get the word out. And if you're having any events in the city of Santa Ana, we'd like to have a mobile response table there uh, when it's time for folks to respond to the census. And certainly partnering with trusted voices as yourselves, as elected officials, and those in our community, and certainly thanking everybody. I'd like to uh, draw your attention to this year, we're opening up two field offices. One will be in your city, the city of Santa Ana, and the other will be in the city of Fullerton, in addition to uh, forming these complete count committees. And there will be lots of advertising happening in 2020. Certainly we are competing uh, with the information that's out there in general, but it's also an election year as well. So it's good to uh, get started as soon as possible. Folks will be able to respond in March 2020. Census Day is officially April 1st, 2020. So we're one year out, minus one day. And folks will be out in the field uh, starting this summer to update uh, on on what housing units are out there. So you may see folks in the field as, as early as this summer. The numbers go to the US president on December 31st, 2020, and the numbers come back to the states on March 31st, 2021 for redistricting. So we're hiring 1,620 positions to staff these two field offices in Orange County, Santa Ana and Fullerton. So please encourage uh, folks to go online to apply they can go to census.gov slash field jobs. The application portal is at usajobs.gov. And they can also go to 2020census.gov slash jobs. The field jobs pay about $20 an hour, and the office jobs pay about $15 an hour. And there are management positions available as well for those who have that experience. You have to be a US citizen, and there's certainly preference for US veterans, those who have served our country. And they also have to pass a background check. Okay. Thank you very much for your time. Let me see if we have any uh, questions from council members. Sure. Council, I have a question. Uh, thank you, Mr. Nguyen, first of all, for this uh, presentation. You're welcome. It's informative. 
there, there was um, just because I personally received it at home, so I wanted to see if you could just uh, inform the public and, and us as well. So uh, about three months ago, I personally received at home a, a long envelope from the Census Bureau. Um, it was multiple forms to fill out. So that wasn't the, 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 I know it was a survey, but that wasn't, you know, what, what is the, is that sent to everybody that's, that the, the census is sent to? What was the purpose of that? Of that, uh, that is a survey that's conducted by the U.S. Census Bureau. So that sounds like an American community survey, which is also required by law for you to complete. It is not the decennial census, which happens every 10 years. The decennial census, which is what we call 2020 census, is what's happening next year, and that's a headcount of America's population. So, so that one, the survey is sent to every household as well, right? No. No. Next year, folks will be able to self-respond online and by telephone. So the, so the survey that you've received recently, yes. it sounds like what we call the American Community Survey, which is a more in-depth survey. Okay. Please complete it. All right. Thank and return you. it. Thank you very much. Councilor Solario. Thank you, sir. Okay, Thank final uh, thought and question. What did uh, Councilor Penalosa just sign up for? What does it mean? Yes, please inform me. <laughs> well... It, it means that you are taking responsibility for your entire city, of course, representing the city council. And, and Mayor, you've indicated uh, your willingness to serve as well. I will. Thank you very much to you both for serving on the Complete Count and, Committee. And ju just to let the, the mayor know and yourself know, I've, I've had some conversations with Daisy, who's been great. Uh, we went over the map of Santa Ana and, and the, the least response area is in, your area. Is in Ward 2, North, North Central Santa Ana is where we, we have very bad response rates. So I, you know, I mean, if you want to take- We'll go door to door. We could, we could all go door to door together. I'm up for it. So. All right, we'll do a little bit of work and sure. contact the churches, the schools, everybody we can throughout the city, but in particular in that yeah. area. So you know exactly what you'll be doing. Look forward to well, working with look, you all. Thank you and thank you for the job that you're doing. And I got to tell you a little story. I'll never forget that AQMD vote. Um, you kept your word, and that matters, and I much appreciate that. That's when he was mayor of uh, Garden Grove. He voted, voted to support me for AQMD, and I appreciate that, and I appreciate the job that you're doing here today. Thank you, Val. Thank you. With that, I think we can move on to, do we have anything to report out, city attorney? I think the answer is no. If, if you did, I'd be surprised. Um, but, you know, you could. No, I'm kidding. Um, any items to be pulled? I'd like to pull 11A. 11A, any other items on the consent calendar? I'd like to pull 19A through the... I'm kidding. Joking. <laughs> Council Member Iglesias is not here today. All right. Do we have any speakers on any consent calendar items? No, we do not. All right. So I'd entertain a motion on the balance. Second. Those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries unanimously. Now we had an item that was pulled correct. Was that 11A? 11A. 11A. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just wanted to uh, thank again the uh, Public Safety Committee uh, for their work on the uh, loud noise ordinance. Um, I want to thank Chief Valentin and Deputy Chief Kaminsky, Assistant uh, City Attorney Bogosian. Wonderful work, and all of the staff. There's many that participated, and it was a, uh, uh, a lot of discussion, a lot of research. And also, I want to thank, once again, Esther Fonseca from uh, Artesia Pilar Neighborhood Association, who uh, helped move this item along. And with that, I make a motion to approve, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. We have a second. By Councilor Solario. Those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. Does that take us to our business calendar, Madam Clerk? Um, Dale Helwig, 65A, you uh, request to speak. It's not a public hearing, but we got to make sure you stay in good speaking shape, so we'll go ahead and recognize and acknowledge you. Please go ahead. Thank you, Mayor and uh, Council Members. Uh, I hope you had a chance to read the letter that I sent to you on Senate Bill 50 that's going up in front of the state right now. Uh, 
it's a, a bill that could really hurt Santa Ana, I think. Uh, one of our guiding principles of the uh, 65A document that you had was to preserve local control. Senate Bill 50 gets rid of that local control. It will essentially allow developers to come in and not use the density bonus agreement of three exemptions, but it, it moves it up to six exemptions. So they can come in and purchase single family homes that are within these zones and essentially develop it and ignore uh, density, height, landscaping, parking, you name it. You six six uh, things that they can bypass uh, the current zoning and essentially bypasses the general plan and land use uh, that's uh, set out by the city. And, and so what it would turn into is a hodgepodge of high rise developments throughout Santa Ana, wherever, they essentially purchase property. So uh, we're hoping that that gets defeated, but I think it ought to be included on this particular 65A report is something that the city should be watching out for. So um, just wanted to bring that to your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Dale. With that, uh, may I have a, uh, a motion or a second on this item? Motion approved. Second by Solario. He nodded yes, Madam Clerk. Those in favor, please say aye. 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 aye those opposed, a motion carries. Now I'm going to direct our attention to the uh, Housing Authority. I would entertain a motion on the consent calendar, items one and two. Mayor, and we yes. would also like to excuse the absence of Sarmiento and Iglesias. I don't know that we housing. did that. We, we did do for the consent calendar, for the regular. All right, we'll be nice, because they did not always approve me, I'll tell you that. No, they didn't, on purpose. So that, so with that, uh, so we'll include that. So we have a motion a second. Those in favor, please say aye. 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 aye those opposed. Motion carries. Item number three: Housing Authority Authority comments. Seeing none, I will adjourn the Housing Authority. Bring it back to the uh, City Council meeting and note that it's before. 7 o'clock, and we have 10 speakers. James Kendricks, come on down. Kind of bounced up there when I called his name. Sophia Breckman, followed by Lair Pierce, and then Chris Schmidt. Go ahead, Jim. Hi, Mayor and Council. I'm here on kind of a fun note tonight. 45 years ago, I moved to Orange County, and 30, well, about 40 years ago, I made Orange stand out of my home. You know, 50 years ago, 1969, Woodstock happens. Does anybody remember that? 50 years ago, 1969, something else happened. Stonewall, New York City. 150 years ago, Santa Ana was founded by William Spurgeon. And here we are, April. There's not a banner celebrating our city yet. I hear something's going to happen. Nothing celebrating. What is going on with our city? We said, we, you guys are sitting up here. You're always proud of our city. And you, you missed the biggest opportunity in the world. New Year's Day. The 80s, we had Rose, Rose Parade floats going down Colorado Boulevard celebrating the diversity and cultural accessibility of the city. We still haven't reached out yet. The biggest marketing tool you could have had was New Year's Day, and you let it slip through your fingers. Celebrating 150 years. And you haven't, and you're still nothing. Our city entry markers look like they're from the Civil War. Our parks look terrible. Think about it. Come on. And you're, you're fighting over a city manager's salary, police fight, and, and here it is, 150 years and here we are, and we still aren't reaching out there. 150 years and we're still, where are we? We'll have the marketing thing you guys gave last council, the rainbow flag. Anaheim's got it flying by their city council, and we're the city of diversity. And where are we? 150 years, and we're still not there yet. 
Sophie, followed by Lair Pierce, followed by Chris Schmidt. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Council Members, and staff. I'm Sophie Beckerman, Community Relations Manager at Bird. I'm here today to express to you our sincere gratitude for the opportunity to work with the City of Santa Ana on the Dockless Scooter Pilot Program. Thank you for being an early leader on transportation innovation and affording your community important access to equitable alternatives to driving. We see a bright future in working with the city on our mutual goals of reducing car use and improving connectivity in Santa Ana. According to our recent rider survey, 34% of riders used a scooter instead of a car and helped prevent harmful carbon emissions from entering the air. As we've done community outreach to educate on safe scooter use, I've enjoyed hearing from Santa Ana residents and visitors firsthand, like the students at Santa Ana College who said that Bird has provided an environmentally friendly way for them to get to class on time. We gathered over 100 personalized postcards from community members indicating why they love having Bird in Santa Ana. I will submit these tonight for your review. As the creator of e-scooter sharing, Bird has seen firsthand how important it is for our transportation solution to be integrated thoughtfully into the community. We take the importance of protect protecting the safety and welfare of our riders and communities very seriously, and so we commend Santa Ana on its efforts to, to develop clear and impactful regulations. Thank you again for being the first in Orange County to welcome this innovation and offering your constituents this affordable, sustainable transit option. Congratulations on a successful pilot, and we look forward to being back in Santa Ana soon. Thank you. Sophie, real quick before you leave, you realize that part of the reason we didn't extend right now the temporary uh, trial period is for insurance purposes, right? And yes. The way so you guys are working on that with a city attorney? Yeah, I can just give you a really brief update. I did talk with someone from their legal counsel office, and um, both from Lyme and Bird. Lyme, honestly, was responsive, less less enthusiastic, but the Bird official said that they would consider defending the city in the ADA lawsuit, and they would consider entering into an indemnification agreement. So I was very optimistic, but I have not heard back from them. That Please, was what just I get back year. to your folks, tell them we need to be indemnified. Somebody gets in an accident, we don't want city liability. So if you can, you know, cover that to the satisfaction of the city attorney, I think, you know, this council is pretty innovative and open-minded. And I know some of us even rode those, right, Councilor Peñaloza? Yeah, I rode one. Awesome. All the time. Great. Yeah, I'll definitely commu communicate that back. So no <laughs> He's over 18. Thank so you. anyways... Please just make sure they get back to our city attorney. It's very important. I will, definitely. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Lair Pierce, followed by Chris Schmidt. Thank you, Mayor Polito, members of the council. Um, I am Lair Pierce. I'm here to speak about something a little different tonight. It's a legislative issue uh, that concerns my client, the Cadiz Water Project. But the bill that's in Sacramento about this project has much bigger ramifications. It threatens... Um, the whole CEQA approval process in the state of California. So I wanted to bring bring that to your attention. Um, the, the Cadiz project, real simply, there's a great big aquifer out in the out in the Mojave Desert, and currently all the water from that aquifer, a billion gallons of water a year, evaporates into the air and is gone. And we want to bring that water into Southern California. Uh, it's enough. We'll have uh, enough water to serve 400,000 uh, Southern Californians. Uh, Santa Ana isn't planning on using that water, you are blessed with being over the uh, Orange County aquifer and you don't need the extra reliability that a project like this would bring. But uh, my water district, Santa Margarita Water District, doesn't have a local groundwater source and they uh, do want to bring this water in. Um, Cadiz has been involved for 10 years in getting uh, regulatory approval for our project and uh, we have a certified EIR. We were challenged in court. We won all 12 court cases. Uh, every uh, The courts and the EIR both said that uh, we will have no uh, significant uh, environmental impact. Um, despite that, opponents are trying to stop our project through legislation. And uh, this year, uh, the third year they've tried, it's SB 307. And um, I wouldn't normally bring this to your attention, but uh, SB 307 is a slippery slope for any city 
or any uh, private entity that has to deal with getting approvals under the California Environmental Quality Act. That's because it takes our project, which is fully certified, full EIR that's been upheld in court, and creates a whole new level of review over and above CEQA that we would be exposed to. If they can do that to us, uh, they can do that to anyone. Um, let's say a, a project in Santa Ana like the Main Place Mall transformation project or your recent uh, Metro East mixed use overlay district expansion. If you had a dedicated opposition to that that had lost at every turn like our opposition has and they're out of options, if SB 307 passes they have a new option. They can go to the legislature and create a story and uh, get a new level of review imposed on them just like they would like to impose on us. So. Um, I don't really think that California should jeopardize the certainty that comes with a certified EIR. I don't think that cities uh, are really very much in the mood for uh, more usurpation of local Thank control you. from Sacramento. So I have a copy of a letter that I'll just leave with your clerk. And Thank you. Appreciate Thanks for your that. time. Chris, come on up. Uh, good evening, Mayor, City Council members. I'm here today to make a public comment regarding some statements I heard, heard, made, heard earlier today in Judge Carter's courtroom uh, regarding uh, saying that there was no opposition to the proposed shelter locations. So I'd like to take this opportunity to remind you. In September of last year, the City of Santa Ana entered into a memorandum of understanding with the County of Orange where they identified a location. On uh, that set September 4th City Council meeting, there were 14 letters submitted to the City of Santa Ana. All 14 opposed the shelter location. Again, all 14 correspondence letters opposed the shelter location. I was one of them. Then, a month later in October, the City Manager, Raul Godinez, sent Frank Kim, the County CEO, a letter saying, instead of that location, choose this location buy this location instead. And when we asked the city, why are you guys choosing? They said, we have no jurisdiction. Uh, the county can choose wherever they want. Yet Andrew Doe came to a February neighborhood meeting and told us the city told us to buy the Yale Street location. This is exactly why several Santa Ana community members requested last year that there be a Sunshine Ordinance meeting regarding this shelter location because we're supposed to have input so we don't fall into this Normandy place location situation again where the county is telling us it's the city and the city is telling us the county. Meanwhile, us, the residents and the businesses are stuck in the middle. Um, again, I think it's highly inappropriate for elected officials to stand in a federal courtroom and say there's been absolutely no opposition when in fact there is. In the same court hearing today, both the city of Costa Mesa and the city of Tustin had identified a location, but the community said that's not a good location. So those cities worked with the community and found an alternative location. Same thing with Huntington Beach. There was just an article today. They said the location they've identified was too close to a school, so they're working with the community. I respectfully request that we hold a community forum regarding this and let the community have some input. Thank you very much. Let me just for the record tell you that um the city did choose that site. Andrew Doe is right. He did not. We did, just for the record. Uh, let me uh, go to city manager comments real quick. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Um, the city is hosting a job fair this Saturday, April 6th at El Salvador Center at 1825 West Civic Center Drive in Santa Ana, and it will be at 10 a.m. Thank you. Now, council comments. Count Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So I was at federal court this morning with uh, Mayor Polito and our staff. And uh, Mayor, you had left at that point when I was called up uh, to go and speak because the, it was, uh, there was a question about the Yale Street project. And for clarification there, Mr. Schmidt, I was standing next to Andrew and he said that he received opposition from the council. It wasn't that there was no uh, opposition, period. It's that he was talking about council members. And I told him and the, and the judge that I, to my knowledge, there has been no opposition from the council members at the time. Then we were sent, we were, don't, don't, uh, you had your time to talk. So I was there. I, I was there. I was there. So I, I couldn't, I can't hear what you're saying because you're not on a microphone. So I, I'm sorry. So. Council members are voted no. Okay. 
We're talking about we're, we're talking about right now. We're talking about yeah. I haven't I haven't received I haven't received anything from her. Oh well, you know I didn't think about yeah, that. The last council okay. meeting she has made. Okay, a lot okay. Of well you know what? Let's move forward. Okay, so it's, so anyway, so I told him to my knowledge I didn't hear anything. I didn't know of such a thing. But uh, anyway, so we uh, are in a legal contract with them. We have an MOU. And, I, you know, that, was, that came from the previous council. And, you know, I'm intending to go through with it because it's a legal binding contract. What are we supposed to do? Tell them no? Then we're going to get into a big mess. You know, our, our homeless shelter, the link, has had zero complaints as it went up from the neighbors. Zero. I have Deputy Chief Kaminsky in the other room if he wants to come out and talk about it. But, yeah, he testified today that there was zero complaints. And so there was, um, uh, there was that. You know, a lot of people talk about, oh, well, we don't want to hear everybody who's, look, nobody wants it in their backyard. There is no perfect solution. You just have to toughen up and make a decision and put it somewhere. And this is the location that we picked and, uh, you know, the people that talk on the sidelines, they're not getting sued. They're not paying out. They're, they don't have all the information. They're not going through all the legal challenges. There's a lot of things that we can't talk about because they're, 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 they're legal uh, matters. So, you know, it's, it's, I know it's tough on the public when they read something in the paper and that's all they know is what they read in the paper. And they don't know all the background that led to that. And then again, also, when you read the paper, when you read the media, it's, it's like a police report. It depends on how you write it. How are you going to go? What do you want to actually convey? You can take the same thing and just the way you write it will make it look like it's something uh, different than what it really is. So anyway, that is my uh, comment, and that's where we were at today. And uh, we're going to push forward. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Councilmember Jose Solorio, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. A few things. Uh, first, um, uh, many of us, including about 800 high school students at Cesar Chavez High School, were able to enjoy a very nice talk by uh, uh, Juana Chavez, who is the daughter of uh, Dolores Huerta and Richard Chavez. Uh, uh, I did receive some support from Sylvia and the city manager's office, who's on loan, and she was fantastic. So thank you, thank you for her. I do appreciate the representatives from. Uh, uh, Lyme and Bird that uh, were here, and I'm hopeful that we could figure out how to do a, an evaluation of the scooter program uh, that we could share with the council and, and the public. Um, staff did an outstanding job, you know, Public Works and Parks on uh, the 6th and Lacey. Uh, groundbreaking, it was very well done. The community enjoyed it, and it's one of those little pocket parks that's right there, right next to the, the heart of a community with a lot of residents and children. And even though it's a tight little park, there's even going to be a room for a little skate park area. So that's uh, very awesome. It was very well received. Uh, on, on the Yale site thing, because I received a number of uh, comments and concerns today, uh, we obviously voted on MOU. An MOU is not binding. Uh, we got to go revisit different elements of it. Um, I, I, I do feel like, obviously, on the issue of whether there's opposition, uh, or not from the dice we've heard some from the public we've heard some I think the school district also sent us a letter of opposition uh, within uh, that the last couple of weeks so that's some of the things that, that I'm aware about uh, a community member also shared with me uh, a concern about the Sunshine Act and the MOU that we did uh, pass uh, the Sunshine Act for things that are city subsidized seem to require a meeting, and I don't think that meeting has occurred yet. So, if we do want to stand by a Sunshine Act, I think it probably is a meeting that needs to occur uh, because whether public, nonprofit, or others, we hold everybody to the Sunshine Act. So, again, it's not that I'm saying I'm not supportive of many of the elements in the MOU, but there were some that we we're going to revisit, like costs. You know, right now uh, at the courtyard, you know, we have various residents that are there, we get charged nothing. Whereas at this new place, there's, there are going to be costs, and other cities, if they send their homeless here, there's not going to be a cost to them. So we just kind of got to look at the fairness thing. Uh, and then we really finalized a lot of the MOU work, um, not taking into account the beds at the link, 
uh, because you know we kind of were working on the on the link you know for for, for separate purposes uh, and and although the link is quote unquote temporary, uh, I think we do need to take that uh, in, in, into account uh, and. We just kind of got to revisit, you know, the whole thing. We also have some new council members that haven't been briefed on the MOU. Uh, and then finally, the MOU also says that the city has to select the site. And the legal question not for now or for later, what does that mean? Does that mean we have to vote on the site at some point? Because I don't think we've necessarily have, have done that. So I just want us to at some point in public session or if it needs to be in closed session that we revisit the various points in the MOU to see what's still relevant, what's not, should we try to renegotiate any of it, cost issues, equity issues. We now know what some of the other cities are doing. Uh, and so it is also a, a, a moving situation here. We ought to take uh, an overall look at it. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member David Peñaloza, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, again, uh, like uh, Councilmember Solorio, I'd like to thank our Parks and Rec uh, Director Lisa and, and staff for, for that great, and the community, all the community that was involved in, the, in uh, making the 6th and Lacey Park possible. Uh, Saturday was a very nice groundbreaking ceremony, good turnout, so it was very successful, and I'm happy to, to see the community involved uh, in that regard. Uh, Friday, I went on a, uh, another uh, ride along. And I'm happy to say that it was very boring, very quiet, very uh, Friday night, nothing was happening. There was like two noise complaint calls and, and cars blocking a driveway, which was surprising. But then I got dropped off and it felt like the city just went, you know, into chaos. Uh, there was helicopters over my house. There was a, so, uh, you know, it was just wanted to point that out. And uh, in regards to the MOU for the, the Yale uh, site, I wasn't here when that was approved. And I mean, when I look at the, the facts and, and as somebody directly Im impacted by, by the, the homeless situation in the industrial part of town, I, I would be opposed to it. And I, I still am not comfortable with it just because, uh, you know, I, I work half a mile down from the link. And in the last seven, six months, I think the, the homeless problem has intensified and gotten worse than it's ever been. And I'm five and ha half a mile down from the link, you know, and I don't think enough outreach was done with the businesses around the Yelp site or the community involved. Uh, and, it, you know, it, it's things where it's like I've seen my, the building I work at be caught on fire because of things like this. So it's a, it's a I do have concerns with it, but um, there is an MOU now and, and it's uh, but I'm sure there there's possible conversations that we could have to bring that number of, of, of beds down. Uh, and that, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Um, fortunately, we're working with the county and they go very slowly. So we're going to have time to talk. If it were Santa Ana and if, uh, you know, Deputy Chief Kaminsky were there and if we had our, you know, Public Works Director flout and control, the thing would probably be up and running by now. You know, or at least we have bodies going in there. So the county says that they're 10% done with the design and they won't be ready for a year. We're trying to speed them up till September. So there's going to be time to talk about this. However, I've got to remind us the link is only temporary. That's going to go down. And all of a sudden the relief that we see right now citywide, because we are able to put people in on a regular basis, and today the Deputy Chief gave a report in the court and basically said that it's you know pretty much full. Certainly the families uh, that are in there are full, the children, there's something like 30 children at any one time and that's full. And then you know we have a few spaces uh, sometimes in the men or the women's uh, areas, but in either case it's being utilized. When that goes away, and it will go away, we need a backup. Also remember the uh, you know, the, 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 the bus, uh, uh, you know, the old bus depot, which, you know, where we now house about 450 homeless, which is, uh, you know, destroying the downtown because they're all over the place and it's not made for that and there's no parking and there's no order to it and it's just very, very difficult. That has to be replaced. 
And at some point, you know, the armory is going to permanently close because they're going to close it in Florida, and we'll want to close it. So we need we need a, a you know to be thinking about all these other factors that are you know part of the equation. It's not um, a zero sum game. So with that. Um, I think we're going to have a very short council meeting at 715. I, I don't know if the council Some members record. will know what to do with, uh, with his free time and the staff are going to get home and their spouses are going to say, what happened? <laughs> Did you get fired? Is everything okay? So, and you can say, no, no, we're in good shape. And city's in good shape and we're going to be in better shape soon. So with that, uh, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you.